And then we have heard something from Macare, the Council on American Islamic Relations. And Ben Carson said, of course, that Sharia law is not compatible with the Constitution. Anybody with half a brain in their head would have to agree with that. And now this spokesperson for care said, that's a bunch of malarkey, bunch of malarkey, said this on Newsmax TV. Love news. Love, um, love what this guy had to say. Listen to this. He said um, that what Ben Carson had to say is anti-American. Anti-American. Let's go to the lines. Rick, quickly, WABC, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Quickly, please. Yeah, hi, Brian. Uh, if you understood what you just said, then there's no reason for this phone call. But I, I'm just, I was kind of upset that everybody's saying, like you said earlier, uh, Ben Carson do- doubled down on it. Ben Carson said nothing wrong. He said in the beginning of the speech, if you listen carefully to the entire speech, mm-hmm. that the presidency or political office was open to all faiths and religions, Shinto, yep. Muslim, Christian, Jew, didn't matter. Mm-hmm. But when he was asked specifically, can a Muslim become president? Well, if they're using that title, they're not talking about somebody that reads the Koran at night in his room. They're talking somebody who's a practicing Muslim. And you cannot become president because you cannot put anything above the dictates that are in the Koran. When, when you're president, you have to take an oath to put the Constitution above everything else. Right, and that's why for them it would be Sharia first. So if we have a true religious, Sharia-oriented Muslim as president, I got news for you, we are the 58th Islamic State. Thanks for your call. Really do appreciate it. Oh, we got some... Oh, oh, there's one more. Tons of calls. We'll get to them. But isn't it amazing how this story's been buried by the media? They won't talk about this. Uh, the three Somali Muslim savages charged with beating a Christian man to death in Portland, Maine. But so, maybe some of you have never even heard this, but we'll get to that. Got a lot of examples of how, of why I should say, people are leaving California, where I'm speaking to you from. Crazy California in the news. It is Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. In for Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Don't forget michaelsavage.com, the home of the Savage Nation, borders language culture. Also, while you're there, please pre order Mike's upcoming blockbuster, Government Zero. Again, everything Savage writes ends up becoming gold. He's, he's an incredible writer, fiction, nonfiction. Government Zero, no borders, no language, no culture government zero also sign up for his newsletter comes out several times a week it's an email blast gets you up to date on all the latest the phone number on the savage nation we're going to get to a bunch of calls right now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 by the way this just in thanks to the producers of the program now it's a war my friends uh Donald Trump took to Twitter today to say he would no longer appear on Fox News. On Fox News. Uh, He wrote, the network has been treating me very unfairly, and I've therefore decided that I won't be doing any more Fox shows for the foreseeable future. No, the fix is in. Nobody wants Fox. Nobody wants uh, Trump, including the head honchos. At Fox. I mean, it was clear with that debate. That debate was a circus aimed at uh, attacking Trump, the first debate. And, of course, you know what he had to say about Megyn Kelly. And, listen, I spent the bulk of my media career in television and worked at some you know, fairly high levels. I worked for CBS News in New York. Uh, I think I know a little bit about television. I'm I'm not I'm not I I know who I like on that network and I know who I don't like. And if I don't like someone it has to do with not their person not them as a person it has to do with their television personality. And there are very few that I really am compelled to watch on that network. I'm just telling you the truth. Very few. Uh that I really like to watch on a regular basis. And that's just my television background. But Fox News is a business entity. 
owned by a very, very wealthy media mogul. And listen, this isn't about pushing a conservative message for him. It's about market share and money. That's it. And in this particular case, I believe that um, the fix is in for Donald Trump. They, along with the Republican establishment and the Democrat Party, do not want him. And they're doing everything they can to attack him. So it's Trump basically about against everyone. Uh, Trump was on, he was, he was on uh, the Late Show last night with Colbert. He was hilarious. He was hilarious. And that's what's going to happen anytime Trump takes to the stage. There's an old saying, Marshall McLuhan said this, the medium is the message. Trump owns the medium. He gets on a stage, he's going to out-TV everybody on the stage. It's just what's going to happen. And he can take apart anybody who's interviewing him, as we've seen. Media doesn't like him. So, uh, then you've got Ben Carson, and we were just talking about this a moment ago on the Savage Nation, where Ben Carson... What did, what did Ben Carson actually say? What did he actually say? Let's, let's remind ourselves. He said uh, on NBC that I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation. I absolutely would not agree with that. Carly Fiorina comes out and says uh, the Constitution does not have a re- religious test for anyone to hold office. It says in our Constitution that religion cannot be a test for office. A direct quote from Carly Fiorina. I understand the Constitution says that in reference to appointments, etc. But we the people can use whatever we want in selecting a candidate. If you don't like the way the guy looks, you don't have to vote for him. That's how it works here. In a represented democracy, that's the way we roll. If you don't like somebody's religion, okay, well, there you go. Isn't it interesting? Here we are. Uh, (laughs) I just remember how the left was pouncing all over Mitt Romney and his Mormonism, right? The duplicity, the hypocrisy. Let's go to John KMAJ in Kansas. John, you're on the Savage Nation. Thanks for checking in. Brian Sussman filling in as host. Hey, good afternoon. Um, I agree completely with what Dr. Carson said. And uh, given his many, many talents and what he's done in his life, you know, and what he said is being taken out of context. And the fact is that a Muslim can run for president in the United States. However, if Dr. Ben Carson was a citizen of a Muslim country, he wouldn't even be allowed on the ballot. Oh, you're right. He would be subjugated to second-class citizen at best. Or in some uh, Muslim countries these these days, he'd be a dead man. Or he'd be running for his life. Exactly. And and the fact is is that no one's saying a word about that, and the silence is deafening. Well, you just said it out of Kansas, and I appreciate it. Thanks for checking in on the Savage Nation. Here is John WBAP. John, go right ahead. Your comment fits nicely with the last one. You're on the Savage Nation. My wife and I sent a small donation today of 100 bucks to Dr. Carson. He's the only one that's had the backbone to come out and say what the majority of Americans believe and are thinking. And the sad fact is I supported Fiorita and a couple of others until they all jumped on Dr. Carson for saying it. But we have decided that we're going to support him, and so this will stop uh, people from calling us a bigot. Uh, he's black, we're white. But we sent him money today because he had the backbone to stand up and say what we believe. And no, I go. would not put a Muslim in charge of this nation. Thank you. John, thanks for calling out a WBAP on the Savage Nation. Uh, by the way, his his uh, support is going through the roof right now. Ben Carson's support is going through the roof. Let's, can I just say something? I, I'm sure there are... You know, here's the disclaimer, right? I'm sure, and I've met many Muslim people who are, they're harmless. Really. They would consider themselves Muslim. But the ones who also consider themselves Muslim and are really, really, really serious about their religion, they scare me. They scare me. I'm just saying, they scare me. That's why all of the, Trump and Carson have tapped into something here. We're we're scared by the religious zealots who claim to be a part of the, uh, who are who carry the banner of the religion of peace. We're, we're afraid of them. And they, they rely on that and have relied on that throughout history to spread their ideology. You see beheadings right in front of your face, and guess what? 
Okay, I'll shut up. Just go about your business, please. Just leave me alone. I'll, I'll, what do you want? You want me to wear the burqa? I'll wear the burqa. You want me to get on my knees five times a day to pray? I'll do it. I just, I do not want to get my head locked up. That's, that's what we're talking about here. This has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. I, I could give you a breakdown, and I will. I promise I will. We'll do it in the next hour. We'll just kind of walk through country by country how these various uh, Muslim countries today became Muslim countries because they weren't always. And it was through absolute barbarism. Let me see here. Uh, here's Vivian, KKOB. Vivian, you're on the Savage Nation. Thank you very much. Brian Sussman filling in. Hey, how are you? Okay, I was going to say, um, where in the world are, are the feminists and the gays and the lesbians to speak up about what's going on? The way the, the Islamic Nazis, whatever you want to call them, the way they treat women and gay people. And I'm an old lesbian myself. I'd like to know, where in the hell are these people to complain about that? I well, you're speaking out, but you're right. There, that's, that sector of society seems to be strangely quiet about this, correct, Vivian? Oh, they don't say a thing. And this war on women, that is so stupid. There's no war on women. I know people say that I can't be gay and be a conservative, but I'm very conservative. You know, and I don't hear anybody saying anything about that, but... Somebody says, oh, you know, like that woman that was in jail. I admire her for standing up and saying, hey, I'm not going to hand out licenses because it goes against my religion. And then another thing, it also bothers me that the Supreme Court, you know, I'm for gay marriage, but not the way they did it. We are losing our freedom when only a handful of people can make laws for this country. And See, there's Vivian. Vivian, you like to think for yourself. You don't like to be a part of group think. And I appreciate you calling here on the Savage Nation. Getting back to this story, just as long as we're, we're talking about this, we'll move on to other things. But um, three Somali Muslim savages charged with beating a Christian man to death in Portland, Maine. How many of you are aware of this? This was just awful what happened there. Uh, 36-year-old guy, 31-year-old guy, 23-year-old guy. They murdered a Christian guy. And they literally just beat the crap out of him over several hours. He was found on his living room floor next to a blood-splattered splat- Bible. Uh, okay, wh- and where were these guys from? Well, they were all refugees from Somali. Okay, there you go. That's, that's the missing ingredient. Uh, no, I'm very serious. So this is what we're talking about on, this, on the Savage Nation. It's, it's a wild time. And then we have the Pope. Where is the audio here, guys? I've got to find it. You had some great audio, and I've lost track of everything. The Pope is... Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. The Pope was talking about... Or was it Obama? No, Obama was talking about the Pope and um, not our sacred obligation to the planet. We'll get to that. But he was talking about Cuba, wasn't he? At some point in time, the Pope was talking about Cuba or Obama was talking about Cuba. Oh, okay. So this is Obama talking about the poor and the new beginning with the Cuban people. I got you. This is clip four. Take a listen. Holy Father, we are grateful for your invaluable support of our new beginning with the Cuban people, which holds out the promise... which holds out the promise of better relations between our countries, greater cooperation across our hemisphere, and a better life for the Cuban people. We thank you for your passionate voice against the deadly conflicts that ravage the lives of so many men, women, and children. Okay, hold on. And your call for nations. You want deadly conflicts, I'll give you what's going on in Cuba. And by the way, uh, Pope Francis' visit to Cuba earlier this week won't make a difference, not at all. What a sham that was. Absolutely a sham. I mean, Cubans today are in poverty like never before. Uh, They're a nation being emptied by the way of its young people. And where are the young people going? Well, they're going 90 miles across the water to Florida. So you got crowds flocking to greet Pope Francis earlier this week in Cuba. I don't know if it was out of faith curiosity or maybe even official summons from the communist government get out there or else 
But, you know, the Pope comes, blesses everybody. They've got religious choirs. If you saw any of the pictures of uh, Cuba, 